Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I was about to upload this last video, and I checked the ending of it, and unfortunately, there was some malfunction, and the last few minutes of the video uh, weren't there. So I'm going to attempt to redo the last few minutes, the last couple of verses. Uh, so bear with me, please. Um, I had just finished talking about um, the verse that said James is the half brother of the Lord. So now let's go to verse 20. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. Afterwards, I came into the regions of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed, and they glorified God in me. So, um, why does Paul have to uh, basically swear to, to God that he's, he's telling the truth? Uh, as I said many times before, uh, Paul was not trusted uh, by a lot of people because he he did have a history of uh, wasting the church, persecuting the church before he got saved. Uh, and then, of course, he also was called a false apostle because the Jewish believers who were following him around, being a thorn in his flesh, uh, going to all, Paul, all of Paul's churches and saying, Paul's a false apostle. He's telling you that all you got to do is believe in Jesus, but that's not true. You can't be saved by faith alone. You've got to also get circumcised, uh, follow the dietary laws, keep the Sabbath, have the temple worship, the animal sacrifices. You've got to become a Jew and practice Judaism. So it's faith in Jesus plus practicing Judaism is what's required. And so um, these people are, they're trying to make Paul into a liar and a false apostle. That's why here in this case, Paul is swearing that he's telling the truth. And uh, other, other places, Paul goes into great detail defending himself as a real apostle. And uh, at one point, he gives an account of all the things that he suffered because of his uh, faith and preaching uh, the gospel. Um, but here, I, I think what's really important to understand is that um, all of these events that um, that I've been talking about here are happening over a long period of time. Uh, when you, if you read the Book of Acts for the first time, I, I think you'll you'll probably understand uh, the gist of all the events because Luke, he wrote the Gospel of Luke and he wrote uh, the Book of Acts. And what Luke did was he gave us a 30-year history on, on the early church. Uh, he was a, a historian as, as, as equal to any, any other as far as his research, his in-depth uh, uh, recording of all the events. So not only did Luke uh, serve as an eyewitness, but he also... Um, uh, interviewed and, and, and observed uh, uh, many of the, the apostles and all the events and acts. Many times uh, he used the term we. So Luke is not just saying that, oh, I was told this. Or I, no, he's saying we did this. So he was there. He was an actual uh, participant in many of these, these things in the book of Acts. But what kind of goes over everybody's head and people are not aware of, is that from the beginning to the end of book, book of Acts, it takes place at least over a 30 to 35 year period. Uh, 
for example, it starts off with Pentecost. Well, the next big event after Pentecost, of course, Peter started preaching. He did a lot of public sermons. And in, by the way, in Peter's sermons, what's the content of the sermon? Uh, he, the content is uh, the death, burial, and resurrection and the free gift of salvation by faith alone and Christ alone. That's the message of Peter's sermons. So Peter's gospel presentation was the same as Paul's. In the book of Acts, we have a couple of Peter's sermons recorded, uh, word for word. And then at a certain point, Paul makes his, for, we have a record of his first public, not his first sermon, but the, the first time there's a, re, a record. Uh, so we understand exactly what Paul said. And Paul's sermons and Peter's sermons are exactly the same. So don't let the Paul only is tell you tell you that uh, Paul had a different message than Peter. Um, also, if, if we look at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit first indwelled and sealed the, the, the believers, uh, it took three and a half years before the stoning of Stephen. I mean, when you read it, you, you think that, well, these were happening in, in, in a matter of you know days or weeks or months, but it was about three and a half year period between Pentecost and the stoning of Stephen. And then about another three years before Paul's meeting Jesus on the road to Damascus and his conversion. So that's about six years after Pentecost, Paul's converted. And then it takes another four years after Paul's conversion before Peter is sent to Cornelius to preach to the Gentiles. And we have the very first Gentile believers. That's 10 years, 10 years after Pentecost. The church exists for 10 years before Gentiles are uh, included. And of course, all that time, the, the, all these Jewish believers, they thought that you have to believe in Jesus and you better practice Judaism too. So they're telling everybody you can't be saved unless you're circumcised and practice Judaism. Um, so if you will look at commentaries on the book of Acts, um, just go to Bible Hub, Bible Gateway, and it has a category called uh, commentaries where various theologians are commenting. Just as I commented, uh, verse by verse on the book of Acts, other theologians have, have written commentaries. And I, I would bet that without exception, this term is used in the commentary right off the bat. They'll say the book of Acts is a transitional book. And we all, everybody says, yeah, book of Acts is a transitional book, but what does it mean to be transitional? And this is where so many people are missing the boat and therefore they don't understand. They don't understand the problem with the, the book of James, how that fits in with everything, because they don't realize that, that this transition was not only a, a, about a 30 year period, uh, but it was also uh, two things had to happen in the transition. They had to realize that it's not for Jews only, it's Gentiles are part of this. So now the, the doors open up for Gentiles to, to join. And then well, what about practicing Judaism? All the believers were Jews, practicing Judaism. And they, they said, oh, well, you gotta practice Judaism. And then there was an argument and a compromise. Well, maybe the Gentile believers don't have to practice Judaism. Uh, just do A, B, and C. And, uh, but they, they didn't really believe that because they, they, the Judaizers from men from James and, and from the Jerusalem church, they were following Paul around everywhere and uh, being a thorn in his flesh, uh, spoiling all of his work, saying Paul's a false apostle. That, and he's telling you, you just believe in Jesus. And uh, we're telling you, you can't be saved by just believing in Jesus. Faith alone is not enough. You've got to also get circumcised, practice Judaism. Um, so all of that was happening over not only months, years, but decades 
20, 30 year period for this transition to take place. And, and so it, it went from only Jews and you must believe in Jesus and practice Judaism to the transition finally became Jews and Gentiles and Judaism has to be left behind. You can't mix uh, Judaism and grace. Uh, it has to be grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone. Don't impose Judaism on the believers. Uh, but that's why people don't understand the book of James because they don't understand that it was the first book that was penned of all the all the books of the New Testament, the earliest penning of a book was James, because James wrote down what he believed and what the church believed in the very, very beginning, before it had gone through this transition. All right, so thank you for watching. I look forward to all your comments. Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.